What is going on, Yon Nation? Welcome back for some more Cyberpunk 2077 news. Today, we're wrapping up everything from Night City War Episode 5, including previews and hands on impressions, but was showcased in the form of trailers and developer diaries, post show AMAs, new characters, in game rewards, and a lot of new screenshot eye candy. Also, we have a special offer via Displayed up until December 3rd, so if you are interested in that metal art, including Cyberpunk 2077 designs, there is a link in the pinned comment. First up, we have Night City War Episode 5, which is the final Night City War episode before the game launches on December 10th. Night City War 5 opens up with a trailer of Johnny Silverhand to help give some context to his motivations in Night City, as well as his relationship with V as a digitized soul lodged on a biochip in the player's mind. V has stolen this chip from Arasaka as mentioned a while back, although it is implanted into the player's mind as shown off in the latest trailer to keep it stable. V is reliving Silverhand's memories due to this fusion, and Johnny has his own agenda in Night City to dismantle Arasaka. This of course has straight ties to the pen and paper lore, where the Japanese mega corporation kidnapped his girlfriend Alt Cunningham, who is likely shown off in this trailer, to develop a deadly program known as the Soul Killer. I will have a full analysis of the Silverhand and gameplay trailer, so for now we'll keep this new segment to the essentials. Next up we are shown a behind the scenes developer diary of Keanu Reeves and his motion capture as well as VA work. Keanu has done VA work in the past, although not as much as for Cyberpunk, but is well seasoned when it comes to motion capture and has done something similar in the past during The Matrix. Honestly as mild mannered as Keanu is, he does look pretty excited. There are some flashback scenes featuring the events of 2020, which you can learn about in my Lore Explained playlist, and we even see some scenes where it's implied that we get to play these events out controlling the character of Silverhand. Next, Boris Pugamarashkovich came onto the show to speak on the process of bringing Johnny Silverhand to life. Before settling on Keanu for Silverhand, Boris mentioned that the process for figuring out what Johnny should look and sound like was long and involved a ton of departments. They considered actors, enlisting actual rock star frontmen, and even toyed with the idea of reviving a recently deceased luminary of the recording industry for The Voice. This is likely David Bowie who creator Mike Pondsmith has always envisioned as Silverhand, who unfortunately passed away a couple years ago. All of Keanu's script stemming from all the branching dialogues, which was the effective work of many feature films, was done in a handful of mocap sessions and under two dozen VO recordings of four to six hours each. Boris mentions that Silverhand is more of a co-protagonist than a sidekick when it comes to Cyberpunk 2077, and both V and Johnny have agendas to pursue, although they do have to work together. Some fall in line with V's agenda and some with Johnny's, and there is inevitable crossover moments where they both have vested interests. This helps to bond the player to both characters. Next we get some insight into the original score for the game and the importance of music and sound in creating that additional layer of emotional context in the game. One of the main ideas was to take the genre out of the 80s and give it some 90s flavor, with ideas from rave, EDM, and industrial elements to help drive along the narrative. They decided that close to 100% of the sounds will be electronic, and with that they've stuck to analog synths. We've known Tina Guo and Richard Devine were a part of the soundtrack ever since the Behind the Music trailer, and Tina mentions that some sounds are super dirty and aggressive, whilst others are beautiful and ambient, which again will help bring out that wide variety of emotions. The team has pretty much scored every quest with custom pieces specifically for that quest, and they've ended up with more than 7.5 hours in music. The gear they used is sourced from small boutique shops, including vintage synthesizers. When it comes to radio stations, CDPR have sourced artists from across the world to write and create music exclusively for the game. They have over 150 custom tracks that you can discover via the countless radio stations in Night City. A 6 track EP was also released on the Cyberpunk channel, so check that out as well. If you guys are like me and were wondering if ASAP Rocky is still involved in the music, CDPR mentioned that he is and his track will be in the game, and the in-game artist Nina Kravitz will also star as a ripper doll. Bitchfork has also recently detailed two volumes of some of these custom tracks, with the first coming December 10th and the second coming December 18th. CDPR finished off this segment mentioning that there is a mode in the game which will allow you to disable the few copyrighted songs replacing them with a different song, making your content creation ventures hassle free. Now after the whole Twitch DMCA issue, I'm sure content creators and live streamers like myself, can rest easy knowing that they won't wake up to copyright strikes that could threaten their channel after a live stream or a recent upload. CDPR moves on to the Jolly Tech and mentions that Cyberpunk 2077 will be available in 10 different languages at launch. We have covered Jolly Tech previously on the channel, so I won't go too deep into this one, but I will mention that it takes lip sync and facial nuance of the characters to the next level. If you want to learn more about Jolly and how it works, I'll have that video in the pinned comment. For now, check out these examples of Jolly in combination with other localizations. 
Honnêtement, sans détour. Rayfield's mine. Скажи заплатить два раza, заплатишь два раza. Nice City War 5 goes on to reveal digital and in-game rewards for Cyberpunk 2077. Each copy of the game comes with digital merchandise including an art book, the digital soundtrack as well as a digital comic. But there are also gameplay items you can acquire via connecting your account to GOG, as well as other items if you have other CDPR games in your library. This will extend to all platforms and there will be more items in the future. We end with the gameplay trailer and again their trailers just keep getting better and better. This one is titled the official Cyberpunk 2077 gameplay trailer, so they really did pull out all the stops for this one. Again, full analysis in the coming week. Moving on, we have an interview with lead quest designer Pavo Sasko, so let's get right into this one. The first question for Pavo is if Keanu's lines and dialogue are related to who you play and how you play. He answers that your relationship with him is impacted by a wide variety of things including gender, your life path, and your choices. You can piss him off if you feel like, or you can be friendly with him, so it really depends. This really challenged Keanu's voice acting abilities, since he had to do a range of lines and emotions. In a question about what types of quests are most enjoyable in Sasko's opinion, he mentions that he thinks the prologue is good, which is most of the footage that we've seen so far, but that the really meaty stuff comes in after everything is opened up to you. When building the quest for Cyberpunk, they have used lots of experiences from all the other Witcher games, using quest designers who have been around since then, and they feel like they've really expanded upon The Witcher 3 and its expansions when it comes to quest design. A question about if Johnny's mind tampering can interfere with your personal choices is asked, to which Pavo simply mentions yes, but that he can't say any more than that. There is a question about quick saving, to which he mentions that yes, this is a feature, but because Cyberpunk is an RPG, choices that you make and the ripple effect of it won't be obvious till later, if at all. You can do things that from a first glance seem meaningless, which are anything but, as well as things that you think are pretty weighty, which won't have as pronounced an effect as you would assume. Pre-development, Pavo mentions that they created a huge library of cyberpunk influences and references. Movies like Johnny Mnemonic, The Matrix and Ghost in the Shell, as well as animes like Akira, and books like Cyberpunk 2020, Hardwired and the Sprawl trilogy by William Gibson were also used here. It didn't stop at these more well-known sources though, and the writers dug through books on psychology and politics and helping them understand how to embed these ideas into the scripts. Next up, we have a question on if all the cars have been revealed yet, to which Sasko mentions he doesn't think so. They've shown the groups of cars, but they have yet to show all of it because there are plenty of new ones and variations of ones we've seen. There is an awesome quest chain developed by the open world team for a player to obtain many of the new cars. When asked about how much of the TTRPG Cyberpunk 2020 lore will be able to explore in Cyberpunk 2077, including legendary characters like Black Hand and Bart Moss, Pavo mentions that this is incredibly important to all departments working on the game. He mentions that lore ties are apparent around every corner. For example, because animals are almost all extinct, in vitro meat is now a necessity. This does have world implications, where if you're at a hot dog vendor, you'll see their supplies are from factories producing in vitro meat. Moving through the world, you'll also find shards, which are small chips that will uncover emails, books, and etc. to give you lore tidbits and literature. Many games include hacking, which is apparently quite in-depth, hinting that it has been reworked since the basic deep dive, and a fist-fighting tournament was also mentioned, with each opponent having their own small interesting stories. You can also enter street races with a deadly cyberpunk spin on it that obviously involves guns and other devices. Moving on, we have extensive previews from big game media, all getting their hands on Cyberpunk 2077 for 16 hours over the span of two days. Some of these previews came with a ton of new screenshots. Now thanks to GoGo Gadget Red for creating a resource where you can check out most of them, and I have gone through all of them so I'll give you guys a brief summary. I will avoid some of the major story spoiler articles, but if you are reading them yourselves, I would definitely avoid GameSpot since it has the most. According to GameStar, the new version of Cyberpunk 2077 begins with a small video where radio announcer Stanley introduces you to the districts of Night City, which should help you familiarize yourself with the lay of the land. If you remember from back in the preview days, there was also a cinematic that was supposed to bridge the prologue in the main story, which is now there showing you what you've done in the meantime in Night City leading to the main questline. Moving on to general thoughts about the main and side quests, all previews which mention the story at all felt that the main questline was incredibly engaging leading up to their playtime cutoff. And PC Gamer reported that the side quests, even during only 16 hours of play, were on par with the best of the Witchers, with IGN echoing this sentiment. GameStar mentioned specifics where side content had you questioning the morality of dollhouses, which are home to sex workers who can erase their memories, to a simple meditation brain dance recording handed to you by a monk. PC Gamer mentions quote, Cyberpunk 2077 isn't all noise, future slang, extreme violence, and fluorescent yellow, 
It has quiet, touching moments of warmth as well. The downside of the quest was a bogged down quest UI that didn't give you enough details to really sort through what you wanted to do first, and that there were also a dizzying array of things that popped up on your screen vying for your attention. Most publications mention that some additional streamlining would be good here, including level recommendations for quests beyond arbitrary difficulty ratings ranging from easy to difficult. This was the most standout negative that I could personally glean spanning the 6 or so previews that I really dove into, other than the other fact that this development build was very buggy. Again, this is the main culprit of the multiple delays. Unbelievably, one of the standout positives was the melee system, which was one of the weaker elements during the 4 hour previews many months ago. There are charge, swing, lunge, and parry abilities all tied to a stamina bar, and a fair number of previewers preferred it to the gunplay, which was labeled as good as well. Choice was another high point across the articles, with tons of ways to progress through missions via dialogue and different ways to infiltrate buildings. One of the beginning quests had multiple infiltration points, with the player for PC Gamer choosing to hotwire an Arasaka vehicle to bypass security, then hacking a camera to lure a sniper away from his post, where he could then be snuck up on and shanked. Another star of the show is obviously Night City, with IGN mentioning that no other game in recollection comes close to its scope and detail, and others mentioning just how alive it feels. I did see some comments mentioning how empty some streets are, but none of these previews really mentioned this, which is probably because they were playing on PCs. Each section had a fair amount of NPCs that were appropriate for that specific location, but to me this just means that base consoles might see an NPC reduction to maintain performance. There was some contention for the AI with some mentioning stealth AI in particular not working so well, whereas others praising enemies abiding by their archetypes, with fighters getting in your face and ranged combatants making sure there's ample distance. Going back to side content, Clouds was mentioned, which was seen in the Xbox footage. This is a bar that scans you and chooses a doll or sex worker for you to fulfill your deepest desires, including things you're not consciously aware of. Afterwards, the doll's mind is wiped so that the client has no ties to the brothel. Again, just an example of some of the thought-provoking stuff associated with sex. If you guys want my recommendation for which preview to read, I do definitely recommend GameStar's preview. It is the most in-depth one and they avoid major story spoilers. That about rounds it up, be sure to look out for more content on the channel, and for more cyberpunk, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.